you don't know, you don't have no idea how to fight this beast, your enemy. And he's tightening up his uh, noose around our necks. Y'all can't feel it because y'all numb and y'all in another frame of mind or in another state of consciousness. And y'all think y'all really consciousness, conscious, but you're not. For one thing, you 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 don't think that uh, there were no warriors uh, back in the, in the 60s, 50s, 60s. There were warriors. And I'm I'm proving it to you right now. Even though you, I know you don't believe me, but this is how the the uh, so-called riots or the, Rebellion started in 1967 because of the fact that we were fighting the police, the establishment altogether. And we were winning. So I went back to when my mother, uh, back in an earlier time when I was around seven. And my mother dropped out the nation. We moved to the west side. And the west side was the really learning experience that exposed the white man. And I think y'all need to know that. And I think y'all need to know how the nation of Islam how it bloomed in Detroit and the reason why Master Farrar came to Detroit it was a different breed of brothers up here in Detroit a different breed of brothers and I'm, I'm giving you tidbits of the battles we had with the Caucasians now, when we moved over there on Wildermere, I was about 11 years old. I was deeply uh, motivated by music. And uh, we had a lot of entertainers coming up in Detroit. A lot of entertainers. On every street, there would be a famous brother in Detroit, um, especially close around where I lived on Wildermere. I'm going to give you a little uh, peep into the minds of when, when we were teenagers over there in Detroit. Like I say, we were fighting the Caucasian. Uh, we kicked him out the neighborhood all the way across Livermore, we was fighting with a motorcycle gang, a white motorcycle gang called the Highwaymen. We kicked their ass. I'm not gonna go into every battle we had with them. I say that for another time. You know, we'll come back to that. And then we start fighting the police. See, y'all nowadays, y'all just shoot. Y'all got automatic weapons. Back in those days, we had Saturday night specials, you know, 22s, sawed off shotguns, switchblade, push button blades, uh, brass knuckles, blackjacks, lead pipes, you know, 38 derringers. You know, 
that you could put up your sleeve or conceal easily. Only had two shots, but it'll kill you up close. And uh, most of the time, we just fist fight. We might stick you. We wouldn't hardly shoot you too much. But the white boys, we had no mercy on them. So eventually, they moved out of the neighborhood. In the meanwhile, my mother's going to an all-white unity Christian church. My uncle is study uh, dropping the knowledge of Islam in my ear, even though the streets had my interest. Because I had dropped out of school and my old man them kicked me out the house at the age of 16. Told me, told, told me that you either have to get a job or go back to school, but you can't stay here. So he gave me $50 and uh, kicked me out the crib. I was kind of rebellious because I wanted to be, a, uh, I didn't want to be a gangster. I wanted to be a pimp, you know, and uh, later on, I dibble dab dabbled in uh, giving card games, gambling, you know, giving, I had a, uh, tried to hook me up an after hour joint. I didn't want to sell no drugs. I sold weed. Some guys tried to get me to sell drugs. I tried it for a minute, but I don't. I don't, I don't like nobody being over me. You know, I never did like to have to answer to nobody, boss. I never, never could take orders. You know, and that's what kept me out of going back to the nation, you know, for a minute. And uh, we're going to shut this one down right here and come back with a third one. Well, another one, man, it'll be more than a third one. Black, black.